You ever watch Thomas the Tank Engine? Here we go. Well, what did Thomas the Tank Engine say, Lemon? That's really mean. They say, hey, take responsibility, mate. You don't sound like that. <laughs> I probably don't have to say this, but massive spoiler warning if you have not seen this movie. This video may not make sense, and... Well, you're gonna know a lot about it by the end of it. So I've had the chance to watch Bullet Train now twice, and I have to say, it's pretty quickly become one of my favorite movies, but probably not for the reasons you're expecting. This movie became really popular in the Thomas fandom because, well, one, it's about a bullet train, and two, it references Thomas quite a bit, which is pretty unexpected, but probably not if you've read the book. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't read the book, so don't expect me to talk about that much. I will reference what I know, and that is that it's apparently different in the ending, but it references Thomas apparently more. And again, the movie references Thomas, so I can make this video. That's not necessarily the reason I think it's a good movie though. That's definitely the reason you'll come to this movie. I don't think it's the reason you'll stay though, and it's definitely not the reason I did. Let me go ahead and clear something up. The references aren't as deep as people may make you believe they are. Everything I learned about people, I learned from Thomas. Oh yeah, bring your sticker book, did I you? I always bring my stickers with me, you know that. This blue one, and Gordon, is the strongest, the most important, but he doesn't always listen to others. Pretty baseline stuff, like things you would expect any classic series fan or kid who grew up with the classic series to probably know. It's more how they handle it that I really appreciate, but we'll get into that a bit later. Before anything, let's talk about the story, starting with the characters. Buckle up, this is gonna be some shit. Okay, so character-wise, there's quite a bit, so try to keep up if you can. Like stated before, we have Brad Pitt, who plays Ladybug, and for all intensive purposes, I guess is our main character. Joey King, who plays Prince, a very evil little girl. Aaron Taylor Johnson, who plays Tangerine. Bad Bunny, who I thought was an angry white chick, but uh, never mind, who basically plays an angry cartel assassin. Michael Shannon as the White Death. Logan Lerman as his son. Brian Tyree Henry as Lemon. Heads up, I might butcher this one. Hiroyuki Sonata as the Elder. Zazie Beats as the Hornet. I might butcher this one too, but Andrew Koji as Kimaru. Ryan Reynolds as basically himself for 15 seconds. And Channing Tatum, again, as basically himself for 15 seconds. And in one way or another, these characters all tie back to Ladybug, our main character. So really quick, let me explain that too. Again, heavy spoiler warning here. So basically, Ladybug is tasked with getting a briefcase, and that briefcase is being watched by Lemon and Tangerine. They also are watching the White Death's son, and basically have to give both to the White Death at some point. Well, Ladybug ends up taking that briefcase, but it ends up he's not the only one after it. It turns out Prince, the evil little girl, is also after that briefcase. I'm pretty sure Bad Bunny is also after the briefcase, but I think it's more of a revenge thing for him. Since it turns out Ladybug killed his wife accidentally, the Hornet also is after the suitcase. I think the only one who isn't after the suitcase is Kimura. You know what, I'm just gonna call him Andrew for the rest of this review. Since it turns out his character is basically Prince's slave for the beginning of the movie basically forcing him to do the dirty work. That is until his dad shows up and puts that shit to rest. But that's not the end of Prince's storyline. It turns out at some point, somebody killed the White Death's son, and Lemon and Tangerine think it was Ladybug. It was not Ladybug, though he has been killing shit. It was Prince the entire time, and it turns out they are brother and sister. She is the White Death's daughter, and the entire time is planning to kill him. Not just her, though. The Elder also has a bone to pick with the White Death and plans on killing him as well. And then eventually the White Death shows up on the damn train too. Yeah, there is a lot going on in this two-hour movie, if you couldn't tell. I probably missed something there, but again, go watch the movie. Believe it or not, I still haven't spoiled the entire thing. I probably will, though. Did you get all that? I barely did. And I think that's probably where my first criticism comes in with this movie. In some ways, some of those plot lines are very flushed out and you see them develop through the story. Most of them, you're probably not. Like the entire Bad Bunny thing, for example, gets a really intense backstory and he shows up for, let's say 16 minutes and then he's killed off by Ladybug and we don't hear from him for the rest of the movie. Like what was the point of any of that? It's kind of the same thing with Hornet. We know she wants the briefcase somebody probably sent her, but she's killed off and that's it. The only real purpose she serves is the snake one, and I haven't even talked about that yet. Again, watch the movie. There's 
a lot that happens here. But let's bring this back to what I think the movie did right, and that falls on one character in specific, Fiji Water. No, realistically, it doesn't go to one character, but two characters, that being Tangerine and Lemon. There's this soulless psychotic leader with the largest criminal organization on the planet shoved right inside our fucking ass cheeks. That motherfucker's definitely a diesel in, isn't he? If you mention Thomas Tank and you one more time, I'm gonna shoot you in a fucking... F I guess you could say specifically they come more from Lemon since he's the Thomas fan, Tangerine just more puts up with it. And I think that's probably why I like his character so much. Not necessarily the constant references that he spews out at any given point, more the handling of his character. It's a very mature Thomas fan, and that's not something you'd expect to see in any media. I'll give you an example, and I really hate this example personally. The Neil Patrick Harris short. I call it the tanky short, and this thing just, it, it, it kind of sucked. I love Thomas because he's blue. blue. Oh, well, Thomas is actually Cerulean. Can you all say Cerulean? Cerulean? I hate to admit how true it is because this definitely is some of you motherfuckers. But it's definitely not everybody. You know, not everybody takes it as seriously as some people expect them to. Or in Lemon's case, maybe do, but in a way that doesn't hinder them as a person or make them childish or some type of way. He's a badass assassin who constantly references Thomas characters and identifies everybody through a Thomas character. That's pretty cool. And you can't really foul a normal person for hearing somebody say, oh, I'm a huge Thomas fan and being a little bit curious about it. I don't think it's any more weird than their Lego or pop collection, but we won't even get into that. I'll take a Thomas fan over a Marvel nerd any day. It's admittedly a pretty niche thing nowadays. It's the same thing with model railroading. It's not something a lot of people know, care about, or respect on a level that some others do. And I guess in terms of Thomas and Friends, it's really cool to see a mature representation in some sort of way. Like I said, look at the Neil Patrick Harris thing. That shows a very obsessive, rude Thomas fan, and don't get me wrong, those definitely exist. But it's definitely not everybody, and to see some sort of representation for Thomas fans that's, again, just mature. I don't really know any other way to put it. It's comedic when it needs to be. If you are a Thomas fan like me, you'll get every reference. You'll kind of just be sitting there and have a what did he just say moment, and I really appreciated that. It's also not really in your face. The movie explains itself very well, and you don't have to be a Thomas fan to appreciate it. If you are a Rail fan though, you will, you, you're will you not gonna like the ending of this movie. I hate to be that guy, but let's be honest, the ending crash makes no sense. It gives me the same vibes as the crash from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. What the fuck did I just watch? I will give them this. For what they did, it was animated very well. Um, you know, thinking about it, if a bullet train going full speed did smack a wall that happened to have a small town or village behind it or residential area and it went through that wall, it would probably cause some damage. But this much damage? Really? Are you, are you sure? I'm not too sure. Not only that, but before the train even makes impact with the wall, Brad Pitt's he slows the train down. It's, it starts going much slower. So realistically, would it have even made it through the wall? Probably, but I don't think it would have done this much. And I don't think Brad Pitt would have survived in a very perfect and cinematic fashion. But I'm not, you know, I'm not here to critique that. I don't want to be too much of that guy here. I do understand that is movie fluff. It did just kind of annoy me to see that big of a train crash and everybody walk out of it like it was just fine. It was, uh, just why, you know, uh, why? Literally everybody survived the train. It's none of my business, really. That's probably my biggest con with it, though. Again, my favorite part is not only the mature representation of Thomas fans through Lemon, but every single interaction he has with Tangerine. I love this duo. They are so badass. I'm very jealous of Tangerine's mustache. And I think it's probably their duo that brings me back to the movie before anything else. Ladybug is cool. The other characters are cool. They don't have the same dynamic as these two. Almost every conversation they get into with not only each other, but everyone else is just, it's funny or it's toned in a way that catches you, it, it pulls you in. I'm not a movie critic, so don't expect me to explain this in a way that's very 
savvy. It's just very fun and it's something that I really appreciate. I don't mean to get too sentimental or serious, I guess, but some of you guys may know that I had a brother who passed away and to me, that relationship feels very uh, similar to that. In a way, I'm kind of lemon there, always talking about Thomas, referencing Thomas, and he was just very, what are you saying? Can you shut up? But always was still supportive of it and never knocked it. And it just felt very warming to me because it was very relatable. Not helped by the fact Tangerine dies, but... At Is it getting hot in here? If you're anything like me, you'll come for the Thomas references and you'll stay for the... I want to say cinematic masterpiece it is. It's it, If I had to rate it on a scale from 1 to 10, I would definitely give it at, at the very least an 8.5, only brought down by the fact that it introduces so many characters so quickly and doesn't do much with them. And again, the train crash that... Yeah, how did Brad Pitt survive? I, I, I don't get it. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a good movie. And if you haven't seen it, again, I highly recommend checking it out because if it's good enough for me to watch it twice, it's probably good enough for you to watch it once. I don't even like movies like that, so. But it has trains in it. When you meet a businessman, you must shake him by the hand. When you meet a family man, you must shake him by the hand. You know, I do kind of look like a dollar brand version tangerine. I wonder what toys Lemon played with. Was he a wooden railway fan? I don't think so. He definitely gives me Tommy vibes. He handles his gun like a pro handles a Mighty Max, so, you know, context clues. Either, either, either subscribe, donate, or get the fuck out.